Hi, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm I'm just going to be uh, taking really small time on this one. I'm a designer, but then I also keep switching my hats. Uh, sometimes I'm also on the client side. Sometimes I'm also on the uh, design team side. So that's a kind of role that I keep playing. Uh, and off late, I've I've been uh, working less as designer, but more as a guy who is into go-to-market strategy designs and you know um, sort of service propositions design and so on and so forth. But I started off worked a lot uh, in in this industry. It's it's just that uh, uh, for for recent times, for last four or five years, I haven't been very actively working. Uh, but but I thought that I could I could share with you guys uh, my experiences. Uh, in terms of uh, experience design part of it, uh, and this is more to probably augment what uh, Amardeep was saying in terms of uh, the whole experience design through storytelling. Uh, I think we have reached to a point, we have reached to an inflection point wherein we can take the whole storytelling to uh, storytelling uh, 2.0 in, in, in my opinion. Uh, so what, what I mean here is uh, how are we trying to tell the stories to sort of engage with people? What is it that we are trying to do to uh, sort of create these propositions for people in their mind? Mm, and why, why is it important? So if I may just take a simple example, this is my story and this is how I engage with my story. This is how I connect uh, my target audience uh, with my story. So if, if I take that and if I take an example from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, uh, this one of my favorite films, uh, it's, it's actually all about creating that, that connection in, in your heart as well as in your head. That's, that's what we are, we are into. That's, that's the challenge as designers uh, we have in my mind. Uh, so what is important right now is to create that kind of connect with the stakeholders. Uh, why is it important? Uh, it's absolutely crucial to make a business sense for them because as designers we may have absolutely awesome ideas and uh, in, in the first session we also talked about unsold ideas but then uh, if we are not able to create that business connect business sense in, in our customers mind uh, obviously, we'll have quite a few presentations which just sit in your laptop and uh, kind of don't go uh, through the friction. Uh, so the issue is, uh, uh, you know, really understanding this. So what I would like to uh, sort of uh, push your attention to is, is this small survey that was done by uh, design think tank, uh, think tank called Neutron uh, and Stanford University. I'm not going to run through those uh, 10, all the 10 problems, but essentially two problems which are very crucial here, uh, which is uh, how to find out unclaimed space and how to align the strategies with uh, user experience. Uh, so essentially uh, what has happened now, I feel, the battle has really intensified. Uh, gone are the days when we could have won uh, the sales through uh, you know, pure feature-to-feature uh, -feature matching or price-to-price -price matching. Uh, people have in-depth uh, information about what others are offering. Uh, not only that, but they also can reach out and buy those products. Gone are the days when we could, we could just see the things which are available in US or UK and uh, you know, we were not able to reach out. But now everything is democratized. So they have access to information, they have access to propositions. And uh, also from the other perspective, it's very easy for competitors to set up the, the shop because of the low entry barriers. The technology is easy, the infrastructure easy, and people have much better access to cash. So the battles are, 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 are really heating up. So the question is, if we have uh, sort of disengaged uh, uh, you know, employees, disgruntled customers, and the communities which are completely suspicious of your intentions, how do we battle it? So the in, in, in my mind, the only way you could do it is, is basically creating these uh, meaningful stories for people uh, and kind of creating compelling experiences for them to connect. So this only in my mind can help us turn the table and convert that uh, into delight for the customers, pride for the employees and assurance for uh, the communities. So I mean, as, as designers, people are 
pretty much aware of this, this standard tagline in terms of form follows function. Louis Sullivan uh, said that long, long time ago. But I think uh, there is a new take on it, which has been uh, put in very, very nicely by uh, Hartmut Disslinger from Frog Design. He talked about form follows emotions. You know, so uh, when you cannot really beat up uh, your uh, competitor in terms of price and in terms of features, the only uh, winning point that you could probably have is doing uh, that kind of connect and winning that war with uh, emotions. So in my mind, uh, what I'm going to talk about is, is three key tenets, uh, which is uh, how do you script these experiences? You go to script for uh, sort of immersive engagement. You go to script for understanding the user needs and building them uh, in your design. And third is you go to script it for uh, getting the right kind of business impact. So uh, what I'm, I'll be showing you now is uh, for all the three uh, tenets, I've got two uh, case studies per, uh, uh, per uh, principle. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to keep it really short. Uh, some of them are actually uh, the works done by me. And some of it is, is, uh, is work done by someone else. But then I, I felt that uh, I've also been a person who has been tracking the trends. So, uh, I felt it's a good idea probably to share that uh, with you guys. So if we start off with uh, immersive engagement, I, uh, the whole point is about driving your message very hard. So uh, this, I felt, uh, was an interesting example uh, done, which was extremely immersive. It, it touched upon all the senses, and it was, uh, mind you, it was compelling. Uh, this was actually uh, the first case study for TNT, the television network. Uh, and uh, this was an activation program that they did. So I'll just, just uh, run this video for you guys. I would say uh, the message is very clear. The message is very clear. Uh, everybody just, just got it, right? So the whole idea was about this is what I meant by creating immersive experience, which really sort of makes a lot of business sense. Uh, at the same time, uh, people really, really wanted to do that again and again. So uh, that's, that's one case study. The second case study I thought was also uh, this is, uh, this is where also the business sense starts coming into picture. A brief background about what this project is all about. Uh, there is this uh, uh, sort of a, uh, how do I say, a jungle uh, uh, area in, in Canada where these guys are looking at uh, uh, sort of increasing their uh, revenues. You know? The problem is people, uh, they visit, they, they come in, they spend their whole day in, uh, in this uh, area, and then they go out in the night. Now the question is, for them, the whole criteria was, how do we really increase the revenues? You know, what kind of uh, things that they could do? So instead of trying to play out the whole thing in terms of what we could do during the daytime, they completely changed the uh, sort of premise, and they uh, changed it into a forest lumina. This is the concept done by. Uh, Canadian design agency called Moment Factory. Uh, just, just 
should have take a look at it What they essentially did uh, by doing this kind of extension of visitor travel time uh, got extended from day to night and the kind of revenues that they could manage because if you have to stay overnight obviously I'm going to come there somewhere at least uh, in the evening uh, spend some money time uh, on food when I go back in the morning at least have breakfast so those are the kind of revenue streams that they started generating. So my, the point that I'm trying to make here is that it is not only those activations or experiences things, but what we need to also do is sort of start scripting for business impact. And uh, probably what I would like to now give you examples also uh, is, is about creating this kind of a radical uh, innovation than incremental improvements in, in the whole experience. When you're trying to figure out what you are going to uh, design, it's not a question of what you would design, but it is also a question of what kind of business impact what we could do for our clients. Because it could mean that your clients could also be absolutely clueless as to what they should be uh, getting out of this. So in my mind, in fact, uh, it's a great opportunity when client comes up with really little idea in terms of what he wants to do because in that sense then you are actually going to uh, sort of write the design brief for him you know that is that is i feel uh, is is the point where uh, we as designers also can can up our game uh, and also it's it's about therefore thinking about what adjacencies clients could get benefited through what kind of ecosystem what we can offer to him in terms of that vision what experience design team can create for him is, is what my uh, challenge would be. So I would like to give example of this uh, uh, chain of hotels. Uh, I don't know if uh, any one of you guys have stayed in this, but it's, a, it's a essentially a sort of a affordable luxury for business travelers. You know? That's what their, their claim is. Now, if you look at it, the way they started packaging, they really wanted to come up with a new proposition for the hotels. This was supposed to be a budget hotel, but it was meant mainly for the business traveler. So what they did was they started off with very clear cut 
uh, exploration in terms of what does really business traveler looking for uh, and uh, how could we really package those things and get rid of uh, rest of the uh, you know jazz which is generally there for those high-end business hotels so it's like a business hotel but it's not uh, like a uh, low uh, low on all the benefits it's it's fully loaded if you look at the whole look and feel of this place you have end-to-end -end, uh, uh, bed you have personalized settings I mean uh, you can take your card check-in card and I can check in in any of the hotels around the world of citizen M chain and uh, the same card will remember all the settings of the lights the air condition temperature etc etc every time I'm guaranteed a personalized experience uh, as a business traveler what do I need I need a place where I can entertain my guests and in a, in a good setting so you have like really nicely done up uh, designer uh, lobby you have good large uh, bar where you can have any time of the day you can have your food uh, and uh, you can carry out your work uh, which is a fully uh, functional 24 by 7 uh, business area so when they are providing all of that what they have done in the back end is actually with all these experiences that they have created when the industry standard is when you are uh, uh, generally a staff manages only two rooms you know that's that's the kind of industry standard here single person in citizen m manages five rooms you know that's the kind of uh, business benefit that they have got so they have not cut down on any uh, uh, experiential aspect of it in fact they have upped it but at the same time they have got their costs down so that's that's the kind of business connect which I think and it, it came by the design agency you know that is where the design agencies worked along with citizen M to create the proposition yeah that was a time when uh, these people were trying to figure out what kind of positioning that we should take for this hotel industry uh, so the second one I would like to talk about is cheesecake factory and uh, Cheesecake Factory is, is a uh, typical standard American restaurant chain uh, and uh, they offer sort of you know good fine dine uh, decent I, I, I won't call it super fine dine it's, it's not a Michelin thing but uh, fairly decent fine dine consistent experience thousand times a day that's, that's what they talk about so imagine it's like a fine dine restaurant but with the functionalities the whole back end thing happening like McDonald's you know complete clockwork it's happening but the experience that you get is of a fine dine restaurant so if you think about it what are the stakeholders looking for on one side the diners are looking for food affordability and ambience and the restaurant is looking for quality control delivery and waste management these are the key things which they'll be struggling with so what these guys did was was I mean th they will provide you this kind of thing it is not exactly a McDonald's but if you think about it imagine they have 160 locations they have 308 menu items 124 beverages 49 diet, diet uh, special kind of food items uh, and believe me they change the menu every uh, two times every year yeah complete revamp and in spite of all that they manage 97.5 percent of efficiency least amount of uh, food wastage uh, they have amazing guest forecasting software so they can figure out you know when is the special event happening if there is uh, probably a, a storm going to hit the area therefore probably people will do a lot of takeaways and things like that you know they have this kind of model worked out so what I'm talking about is experience packed in to give you a very strong business sense you know very strong business impact that's that's the point that I'm trying to again highlight and uh, again the third I'm, I'm now really rushing through uh, mind you I'll not take long uh, how, how do you script for user needs I mean in, in my mind though I have gone ahead in a in a reverse order this is the first thing that I would want to uh, you know start off and uh, since I have an opportunity to work in product design as well as uh, uh, communications design go to market strategies brand design I, I sometimes get a feel that uh, the all these roles sort of roll into one and uh, therefore it gives you fairly interesting insights in terms of how other design 
uh, teams uh, handle these issues because we as uh, exhibition or experience design team handle it in a particular way. But uh, my general opinion, I keep having this discussion with Binu for quite a few times, which is where we really need to, as design team, uh, exhibition design team, event design team, we really need to up the, up the game, you know. So uh, if I'm talking about designing for user needs, what is it going to be? Like, we, are we really understanding the insights uh, of needs of the customer? What are their latent needs? What are the needs that they really don't talk about? Can we make the whole uh, experience very intuitive for them? So for this, uh, the, the case studies that I'm going to show, two case studies, the, uh, both these case studies are essentially uh, the projects on which I worked on. The first one is uh, a, a store that we designed uh, when I was working in Philips then. I, was, I, was, I spent fairly large amount of time in Philips, uh, Philips design. Uh, so this is one of the projects that we did. Uh, this is the store uh, that we have for, uh, you know, showcasing all the LED light fixtures of Philips. This was, this was like a top end LED light fixtures. Uh, so what the way we started off was we were trying to understand how people essentially buy uh, lights. You know, when, uh, when the purchase journey starts, what kind of things happen? Where does a architect or um, sort of a uh, you know, uh, you know, civil contractor start influencing this, and how typically uh, uh, you know the customer is is looking at these things. So we started scripting the uh, experience journey, you know, because from there we sort of got a fairly clear idea in terms of how the whole purchase process happens. So when we started scripting it, there were three key tenets which came out. One was we had to really, really get their attention. So we had to seduce them with light. We had to then script the whole uh, experience in terms of planning their path, the way they will move around in that area, and uh, really allow people to play with the things. You know, that, was, that was something which we really were very keen on. So uh, the next thing, obviously, was how do we do it? So the first thing was if I have to seduce them with light, we had to create some kind of visual spectacle. If I have to sort of plan the path, then I have already triggered them. Uh, so take them from that emotional to rational path, wherein really try and explain. Because if I'm selling a product which otherwise costs 12,000 rupees, and I'm selling that same, uh, not same, but that category of product at 85,000 rupees, I really, really need to sort of explain the emotional as well as rational elements in it. And then, how do we make sure that people sort of play with it? You know, because one of the big problem people have is uh, nobody wants to go ahead and start touching things which are kept. You must have seen in the exhibitions, people would just, just stay away and stand. Nobody would want to touch anything, you know. So how do we really uh, provoke people into interacting with it? So, so for the seduction with light, this is what we sort of started uh, creating so we had a large facade which was there outside it had a completely interactive kind of window which would come alive in the night and and it would have these patterns and it was on the one of the busy intersection road so uh, uh, there was no possibility people would have had missed it uh, once you once you are there inside the store i mean uh, it had sort of settings where we had created more uh, dynamic displays. I have a small short film on that. You will get some idea on it. So this was, this was the store, uh, various areas which could show you uh, the things that we had for retail and for office and so on and so forth. So once, uh, once we created this kind of a very non-store-like things, which immediately attracted people's attention, the next thing was how do we sort of uh, make it easy for people to almost buy in into those products and the propositions that we are trying to say. Uh, so what, what, what we did was, again, on one hand you have these kind of things which you can play around, change the colors, change the intensity, uh, really experience it, post which we had these uh, large walls becoming like a projection walls, you know, and where you could do large projections and we could, uh, we could uh, you know, really show the whole installations in a larger than life setting. You know, that was, that was something which is, 
uh, which is a uh, very strong point. I mean, imagine seeing it in a 15-inch laptop, uh, same Anandpur Sahib, if, if I want to show them a nicely done up, lit up Anandpur Sahib, imagine f watching it on a 15-inch laptop versus watching it on a sort of a almost 28 feet wide uh, large screen. So, I mean, it would, it would have a different impact. So, we created those kind of reasons to believe, you know, uh, which could really reinforce that point. We also allowed people to sort of experience the whole thing in a, in a fairly realistic manner. Since it was a light showroom, we could not have had allowed a lot of uh, natural light coming in and screwing up with the impact of the lights. But then we sort of uh, still wanted to show how the natural light is, is used and so on and so forth. So, I mean, these were various other settings. Again, we wanted to explain uh, how uh, even they could also get some inputs. So that's how the, uh, the, the, the whole, whole concept was developed. So uh, mind you, this is a short reel. Uh, this may sound a bit advertorial. Uh, please, please bear with it. Because it was meant for um, the newsletter that uh, Philips wanted to create for internal uh, sort of uh, information transfer. Uh, but just, just uh, I mean, my, my apologies on the hard selling sounding thing. Introducing an interactive lighting experience center showcasing the latest LED lighting technologies. Philips LED lighting solutions take energy efficiency and lighting innovations to the next level with Philips Light Next. Enhance the beauty of retail spaces and let the shoppers feel the temptation by enhancing the colors using the right light and bringing alive the accents with the right beam angles. The seasonal presets of our LED lighting solution are designed specifically for retail stores and they simply transform every single product into a beautiful irresistible indulgence. Say goodbye to stress and feel more productive at your workplace. Thanks to Philips LED office lighting solutions. With state-of-the-art features like advanced optics that offer controlled glare-free lighting and ability to deliver consistent light output, Philips energy efficient LED lighting solutions revitalize the mind and make the professionals feel much more active and productive at workplace. Make your cities, roads and landscapes look better and more safer with Philips energy efficient LED lighting solutions. Philips outdoor lighting solutions offer advanced technology, better light output, long alive and host of other innovative features. Redefining hospitality with our dedicated LED lighting solutions and gifting the guests the evergreen comfort of home. Let the lights lighten up the emotions and bring along a comfortable and refreshing experience with just the touch of a button. Adapting to every mood with optimized light levels and comfort, Philips provides guests with a personalized ambience, making their stay that much more memorable. There's no place like home, and we ensure every moment spent there is a story of love and care. With advanced technology, specially designed to harness daylight, Philips Lighting provides your home a perfect balance of artificial and natural light. This is a very unique experience. Oh, I think it's absolutely excellent. It's been extremely well done. It's overall nice. Good. It's awesome. That's the word I can use. Very impressive. Welcome to Philips Light Next, an experience center 
that opens the door to a new world of lights and see what light can do. So, I mean, so and so for that. Uh, and the last example that I have is, is actually more close to my heart. Uh, because if you may see, uh, we started off with something very, very light-hearted. And uh, uh, towards the end, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be talking about the things that uh, we did for the hospitals. You know, uh, that, that is something which is extremely uh, serious. Uh, but it, it was a very interesting assignment uh, when we did uh, it for Florida, Florida General Hospital. Uh, wherein we actually interacted with, uh, the, the tie-up was with uh, Walt Disney. Uh, so uh, this is a, a pediatric uh, hospital, hospital for children, uh, and uh, what uh, Philips managed to do was uh, get Walt Disney to tie up with, with them. So the way it happened was uh, Walt Disney uh, was very clear that they will not uh, sort of take any of the uh, Walt Disney characters uh, for uh, uh, for. Uh, uh, you know, it will not go ahead beyond the lobby area. It will be completely finished off uh, in, in the lobby area and rest of the stuff will be uh, more serious. So what we did was uh, we did a complete user journey mapping and uh, post which uh, sort of identified what stakeholders, what kind of journey that they go through and uh, then what kind of themes that we could develop, you know, based on Walt Disney uh, uh, famous movies. And then, uh, post which sort of it started becoming more and more serious exercise, uh, and uh, a small small film on that. As That's the last one I have. From the so. moment you walk through the lobby doors, there is an instant wow factor that only a partner like Disney could help create. This 200,000 square foot, seven story facility provides 185 dedicated beds just for children. Each floor was carefully developed to enrapture the patient and ease their fears. One of the most interesting things about the patient floors was finding fun and creative ways to bring all the senses into the experience. So we've incorporated color, sound, texture, even smell into each of our patient areas. Families have to feel uh, totally engaged and as if everybody cares about them. With the Walt Disney Pavilion, the whole idea of taking care of people and because they're people and taking care of them in a very special way has been part of the culture. Families come and they not only have this beautiful facility, but they feel cared for. And I think that's one thing that we offer that is uh, just top notch. As a leading hospital in patient satisfaction, our emergency department truly is amazing. We have given special attention to developing an environment that will calm their nerves and enlighten their spirit. We have a dedicated team of pediatric emergency medicine physicians that are board certified uh, with special interest in pediatrics. We also have a dedicated uh, pediatric nursing staff as well as child life specialists all working together to be able to provide this great care that we know that we are providing to our community. We have given special attention to creating comfort for patients. We want to awaken their imagination and if possible provide a sense of escape from the reason for their visit. We want to make sure that our patients have fun, that they have the opportunities to laugh, to play, to do art, to visit with animals, and to have fun while they're here at the hospital. Laughter and play is part of the healing process and we take that seriously. As you have seen, we have invested in the state-of-the-art resources to provide a world-class hospital. We have developed a team of superior surgeons, specialists, and staff. We have achieved national recognition for our superior patient experience and clinical practices. And we have infused a sense of wonderment and play. This magical combination sets us apart as a nationally leading children's hospital. So this was again a very interesting assignment that we had. So 
the last part that I would like to talk about is, uh, I mean, that's, that's where me and Binu, we keep having a lot of these discussions about how do we really push the whole, uh, whole game in terms of the experience design part that is being done in the events and exhibitions. You know, I feel events and exhibitions are like concept cars. You know, whatever that gets done in events and exhibitions uh, then later ends up in the retail uh, segment or something like that. So the, the, the question is, how do we really use these design principles? I mean, I'm, I'm talking about nothing new. Uh, design thinking is, is pushed by IDEO quite strongly. So uh, I, and, and we keep doing that in, in my, my uh, work uh, in, in the product design and in brand design and communications design. And what I would like to probably share with you are, are these things which we should be doing in terms of making sure that we collaborate with everybody. Because many a times I feel uh, that's a standard complaint. We don't know what they are really looking for. In my mind, that's a plus point. If, if you don't know what you're looking for, I'll tell you what what you should be doing, you know, that's, that's a pl big plus for me. Uh, also, second thing, make it very user centric. Go through this iterative process of exploring define design build that we do in product design quite, quite strongly. I'm just thinking how it could be mapped onto this. Uh, we work that on a digital user experience quite, quite uh, strongly. But I, I rarely see any of the uh, design agencies, uh, or at least in the public domain, it is not shown that if they're working in, in that manner. Uh, again, making it very iterative, trying to uh, you know, uh, do this process faster. Because many a times, the impression is, oh, if I need to do all of that, then the whole project is going to get delayed. That is something also, again, uh, people have to realize how to do it faster. It means there is a lot of back-end work that you need to do. And a conventional way of working will not work. Uh, you need to have guys who can think in terms of people research. You need to have guys who can think in terms of technology trends and so on and so forth. But, and only that's the way you can fail fast and uh, fail uh, quickly. And then, of course, there are a lot of tools that we use. But uh, that is something which I feel it's high time this industry also starts using. Because uh, that's, that's the kind of feeling that I get, you know, because I, I closely work with both these industries and the design teams. And that's the kind of quantum of difference uh, in, in the methodologies that I see. Maybe that, that's my personal opinion. I, I could be completely wrong on this one. But I would, I would really like to, you know, encourage the design community to think in that manner and, and really push the game. Uh, so if you think about it, of ourselves, again, Charlie and Chocolate Factory. We are the music makers. We are the dreamers of dreams. You know, I mean, if we don't do it, no, other, no one else is going to do it. So that's it. Hi, good afternoon, sir. This Hi. is Sangeeta from IEMS. I was really thinking nobody is going to ask me questions. but. No, I have a question. Our company is 24 years old in the same industry of exhibitions and conferences. And uh, this is about storytelling, what you mentioned and a uh, session before yours. But I feel exhibition is a static and a snapshot or a synopsis of a exhibitor, whether it is a company, country, or a, you know, any organization. So storytelling seems to be a much larger canvas for that matter. What's your comment about it? See, instead what I feel we conceptualize like an ad agency, we plan it like an architect, and we execute as a, in a structure specialist or as an engineer. Yeah, oh. this is this is how we we have been going ahead. Yeah. But uh, that's that's the whole point that I'm trying to make right now. It is very difficult. I mean, it took for me personally a long time to sort of get away from uh, the pattern which you're talking about. And uh, really getting that focus out of, uh, away from, you know, these are the three steps in which we will work and switch the whole energy into storytelling. Uh, that is something which I feel is very crucial. Even if I take first point of snapshot, even movie is a snapshot, okay? But it happens in, in say, three hours. Exhibition yeah. would happen over three days. It's a snapshot. But that's the, that's the kind of thing, you know, as, as, uh, uh, it's uh, very static that way, you know. Storytelling yeah. is a process for some couple of uh, say seconds to minutes to hours. 
Yeah. Imagine your grandmother telling you a story in the in the night. You know, I mean, it 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 lasted for half an hour. Same. Yeah. Uh, my exhibition visit is going to last me for half an hour. But then I've got the whole whole spectrum. I've got the whole story. I got the message. That's that's the whole point. And for me, what is important is the message, not how spectacular the structure is built, how spectacularly the technology is working. Uh, my apologies, but uh, honestly, that's where I I uh, I. Beyond the point, I don't care if technology works or it doesn't work or something like that. What is most important is what is user looking for, you know? And it's, it's very difficult for uh, uh, teams like us who are working so uh, embedded in the uh, construction, then uh, technology, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it, it, it's very difficult right now to pull ourselves out. You know, because the, another challenge which I'm having right now in my, my new job where I'm working uh, is aerospace industry. It's extremely technology driven, extremely. Yeah, everything works in aerospace. I mean, some of my uh, uh, colleagues are actually working on rocket science. I mean, we, we keep saying, you know, uh, this is not rocket science. They are actually working on rocket science. And when you're talking to these guys, uh, it's very difficult and uh, to explain them that, uh, you know, forget about the technology. Technology is secondary. The way how you will achieve it is secondary. What is, what is the key proposition? When I'm saying story, I, what I mean is a proposition. Yeah? yeah. That proposition is what, what we are into selling, right? Everybody is selling a story to, to somebody. That's also another problem when, when the whole, whole discussion we were having on the fringe whether we are able to, uh, when we say that the clients are not mature, are we uh, sort of sharp enough to really package our proposition or probably his own proposition and con uh, convey it to him? Do we know how to do it? I'm not very sure. Why do we have those uh, projects, un unrealized projects, uh, landing in your laptop? Because probably three fingers are pointing at us. Maybe we don't know how to package it. Maybe we are focusing on wrong things, and maybe my talk is all very controversial. It can be yeah, debated. Actually, but I my think point we is, need the package which is more customized yeah. for exhibitions as in exhibitions. Because again, uh, this this whole thing, uh, the way it happens is uh, with Binu also. Again, the whole question is, uh, you know, uh, I'm not trying to sell a structure. I'm not trying to sell a fabulous looking object. That is not what we are into. And many a times, unfortunately, our industry is all about selling that. You know, I'll have like fabulous uh, uh, thing built and which will be like a visual spectacle. I think we got to change that. That's, that's all I feel. Thank you, sir. I don't know.